Well, good day, folks. Long time since I've uh, produced a video, but um, I don't, I don't put stuff up for the hell of it, or put a lot of crap up. I think just only when I feel motivated to uh, point out something. And so, given it's very hot this year, particularly in Queensland where I am, um, we've had a very hot summer. And hot summers aren't good for fridges. So th let's just have a look at how a fridge works um, and just deal with um, some of the issues that you come across, you know, when people come in to see you. Um, and I don't think maybe how a fridge works is um, probably that evident to people. So let's have a look at one. All right, so here we have a, a Waco. Uh, it's a CFX, about a 50 litre. This has got a fault in it, and I don't think it's repairable. But anyway, it's a good thing to have a look at. Uh, she's leaking. But in here, these are the components that uh, make the fridge work. We've got a compressor. We've got a compressor controller. This is bolted to the side of that, or connected to the side of that. And this uh, unit changes the 240 AC and the 12 and 24 volts DC, converts it to a type of three-phase DC that runs this compressor and gives it its efficiency with a very small size. Um, so this compresses uh, the refrigerant from gas to a liquid. The liquid's injected into the internals of the fridge and uh, as it changes state from a, a liquid to a gas, it gets very cold and so the refrigerant, uh, the evaporator plate on the inside of the fridge um, is, is, is quite cold and the ambient temperature in the fridge, which may be at say three, but the plate might be at minus 12 or something. It's a heat transfer process. So when we don't think of heat as, a, as in a stove or hot weather, think of it as, a, it's a relative thing. So what do I mean by that? Well, the plate is much colder than the temperature inside the fridge. As I said, the fridge might be at three or four or five degrees um, and the plate is at minus 12. So in relative terms, the inside of the fridge is hot compared to the plate. So the plate absorbs that heat into the refrigerant um, as it travels around and it warms the refrigerant up, brings it up to a higher temperature. It returns it to the compressor and as it comes back into the compressor, uh, it compresses it from the refrigerant gas back into a liquid refrigerant and in doing that it gets very hot so as it exits the compressor this goes to this coil you can see in here and this is a con called a condenser it's very hard to see because it's very small in here but anyway this is one type of compressor so you may or may not uh, recall this is something that used to be on the back of old fridges they used to have a the entire back wall of the fridge was covered in a condenser like this and it, it in its physical size it allowed the um, fridge to convection cool there was no fan this has to have a fan and in the middle of there which you can't see very well there's a fan that's wrapped around the fan in there which is a real bugger when you've got to change it uh, but that's the only way that the uh, fridge can that's the only way the fridge can uh, cool uh, somewhat efficiently, and probably not that efficiently, um, given its physical size and the amount of room it's got to do it. So the fan and the condenser are critically important in trying to maintain temperature inside your fridge, particularly in hot weather. Absolutely uh, important in, in hot weather. So you can't afford to have your fan fail and um, it's, it's, you know, important. So the other thing about this fridge in the design, let's have a look at it. Okay, so when we have a look at this, um, the fan in here sucks in warm air through the grill, I mean, uh, cold air or relative. Ambient air comes in from the outside through, it's pushed through this condenser unit here, uh, which causes it to cool it, cool the refrigerant. And then, it, and as I say, it's wrapped around. So both sides, it gets, gets air flowing across it uh, and then across the compressor and even cooling the compressor controller here and it exits on the other side of the case so it's a tunnel you've got a tunnel of air passing through these elements here to to, to um, you know make that uh, able to operate so it's amazing the job they do particularly in a big fridge 
uh, the other compounding issue I think with uh, you know with fridge in, do in doing its job is how well the case is insulated and unfortunately a lot of them aren't that well insulated because these days they put this stuff in them which is expander foam it's not a proper uh, that's not a proper um, insulation foam uh, they don't use you know good quality stuff in, in any of the fridges now it's because it's expensive so they've just stopped doing it as they do with all things uh, it doesn't reduce the price of the fridge necessarily it simply saves them money and they make more profit I guess um, but I don't know why they've gone away from that so as I said that's a tunnel arrangement now you can see down here uh, this is an ARB fridge not a new one an older one again has the tunnel got the intake vent there the air passes through blows it out the side but can also blow it out the back through the extra grills on that here's a Mike Coolman big Mike Coolman same deal they're all very similar um, it has air intake on this side air exit on that side uh, and an Evercool use an older Evercool but these are still made in Caloundra pretty much the same they've moved the motor to the outside this is 20 something years old uh, this motor is now mounted on the side here but this is one of their early variants it was an esky that they turned you know basically built it in as a fridge very good works really well and never misses a beat nice and simple operation uh, again vent on the back no electronics which is great um, and exit on the front and it moves a lot of air through there it's quite an efficient um, air you know cooling arrangement on this the other benefit of this fridge the other good thing about these Evercools that are built here and there are Evercools that aren't built here but this one has a, about 38 mil high density cool room insulation in it as I understand it they use proper insulation and the result of that is when you're running it as I am here as a freezer the uh, loss of uh, you know the cool escaping out through the side of the and the lid and every is absolutely minimized so the interesting thing about this even when it's really humid you don't get moisture build up on the outside of these if you check on these fridges typically if they've got a bag on them you put your hand down the inside you'll find it's damp and cool and that's just a cold escaping out of your fridge because the insulation's not up to it the ARB's got very good insulation this one don't know about the new ones but these ones are very good so let's have a look at this cooling bit so here, this is what's in the fridge. This is a different version. The other one had a wraparound black thing made of tubing. This is, but typically you see these in there. So it's like a little mini car radiator. The hot refrigerant comes in here, circulates through. The fins dissipate the heat across the entire structure. As I say, just like a car radiator. A fan sits on top of that, and it either sucks or blows the air through, through this thing and to get rid of the heat so by the time the refrigerant exits at the bottom it's it's at ambient temperature whatever that might be it's, but it's quite cool and that's now in uh it's a liquid form and it then goes back into the fridge to turn back into a gas and get very cold and, and once again do its job so it just continually circulates some of them have a little shroud over them like this to concentrate the airflow and that's uh, this is the back of a Waco CFX or a Dometic. This is a dual branded one, but they're all just Dometic now. If you have a look at this one, there's our little radiator in here with a fan mounted on it, and this blows hot air this way, sucks air in on this side, and blows it out on that side. Um, so, again, same arrangement compressor controller, compressor, fan. But this doesn't have a tunnel, um, and I think this is, you know, not the most efficient. It's, it's a typically bad design uh, for a vehicle, or you know, putting in the back of a four-wheel drive, etc. Why? Because your air intake and outlet are beside one another. It's blowing hot air out here, and that's the that's preferably taking in ambient temperature air on this side. Now, if you've got this in the back of your car, and the you know it's against the back of the seat or there's a wall here there's nothing to stop that just going around and back in that just goes round round circles and that's just really inefficient thermally it's it's just a bloody bad design 
uh, pretty much is why all the other fridges have a front to back design as I say a tunnel like this um, and it was probably better in to some degree I mean the earlier models had this on it to the CF80 this is a CFX 95 75 the CF80 CF110 um, they had this same arrangement but this compressor was bigger uh, this has been downgraded to a smaller compressor, but the bigger compressors were sort of, um, I don't know, they're, they're much faster. Those fridges pull down much quicker. This thing can take an hour and a half to two hours to cool down. The old CF80, uh, which is an 80 litre, this is a 95 litre, but it could pull that down in about 20, 25 minutes. It would be down at working temperature. Uh, this struggles to get down to even to plus three in, in a couple of hours, and particularly as it gets hot. So not a good design, absolutely important that you have plenty of clearance around the back of this fridge so that air can get away. In fact, you'd want to almost be trying to put something in to separate those two so that this uh, sucking in cool air from around the corner here somehow and this any hot air coming out of here was directed away that way or up, you know, but not, no, don't allow that to go in. So it's really important nothing gets stacked around these fridges. These vents must be maintained 50 to 100 millimetres nothing in front of the vent you can stack stuff along here if you you know going out camping but never ever block these vents because in the back of the car it's stinking hot so uh, ventilation is critically important for your fridge and as i say particularly not weather and you're totally dependent on this fan if this fan fails your fridge is not going to work at all um, it's just it might pull down five or ten degrees and then that'll be it because it, it just can't get rid of the heat um, because and as a, the latest model of this fridge now they've turned the fan at 90 degrees and they've gone from that to this. 40% reduction in airflow. They've equally not just, they haven't just changed this fan to this, they've changed this down to the same size as the fan. So the whole thing is now uh, 80 by 80 instead of 120 by 120. So significant degradation in airflow and, and having it at 90 degrees uh, again, you haven't got this fan forcing air straight out the front. It now blows sideways and then into a little funnel arrangement that directs the air to the vent on the back here and pushes it out. Not efficient. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure why that's done. The fridge hasn't changed in physical size. Uh, it's got to be a cost-saving exercise, but the difference between the price of this fan and an 80mm fan is, you know, like a dollar or something, two dollars, you know, it's nothing. Insignificant. So... I'm not sure I'm not sure what the purpose of all that was uh, and certainly these compressors aren't the same as the old ones uh, were much better but again cost saving so there you go so take away from all this is um, make sure you provide adequate ventilation for your fridges um, when you're camping and indeed when you're traveling um, it's it's Critically important, you do not stack stuff around your fridge. Um, if you, um, you know, don't leave the fridge in the back of your car with it all closed up in summer with the sun blazing. Like the back of that car can get to 50 degrees and the fridge is just going to go backwards and will run continuously and it will get stinking hot. All of this motor part will be, will be really, really hot. So if you camp somewhere, leave the back of your car open during the day so that there's good, you know, it maintains a lower temperature than it might otherwise be. As I say, today we're, well, what are we at now? 34, we're at 34 here. Um, so in the back of a car, it would could easily be 50 degrees, no problems at all, and higher. Back of a four wheel drive, uh, you know, one of these things with the tradie backs on it with the gold wings, they can get sticking hot. I've seen these fridges in the back pushed up hard against the walls, no ventilation at all in there. And the fridge is carked it, you know, we're well, yeah, not surprised. Um, and no thought about ventilation. So if you, you know, as I say, think about this. This is important that you maintain adequate cooling. You don't want your fridge failing with all your food and stuff in it. Another point, if you're going, when you're going away, um, now most of these fridges are in here, they've got faults in them. Um, obviously, that's what they don't bring them around just to visit for the hell of it. Uh, so a common fault is uh, temperature sensors fail in these things. If you're going camping, turn your fridge on, 
about three days before you go and make sure that it's maintaining temperature correctly because time and time again people go out they load the fridge up turn it on at night they get out there the next day and everything's turned into a block of ice because the temperature sensor's not working and the fridge didn't think it was cooling adequately so it froze everything uh, and uh, all the beer exploded the food's all covered in crap and, you know they've, they've lost a lot of money's worth of food and grog and everything else so always run your fridge several days before you go to make sure it's still working because it's been sitting around doing nothing for quite some time probably so unless you're using it you know daily you don't know if it's got a problem I had a fridge and it took three days for that to happen and suddenly it was you know three degrees next day it was three degrees next day it was one degree the day after that it was minus 18 so it, it, it took three days for that fault to develop and I have seen that before where it takes more than 24 hours for the uh, you know the temperature sensor thing to go out of, out of whack so make sure you turn your fridge on a few days before you go don't leave it till the night before and assume everything's going to be working because it's going to be a very disappointing start to the camping trip if you don't um, make sure your fridge is working properly and it gives you adequate time to do something about getting it fixed or getting another fridge or doing something you know but don't leave it till the last minute all right i'll leave it at that i think that was all it was just about Thought weather and uh, you know impact that has on fridges. So um, bags are good; uh, they do help. But uh, I mean, a large part of it. The I mean, I watch this thing, this Waco here, um, when it uh, cycles off. You can watch this temperature rise. You know, it goes up about 0.1 of a degree every 15 seconds or 20 seconds or something. It might, might not be that often. It's every 30 seconds. Um, so it very rapidly loses um, its cooling. And if it's, a, if it's set at minus 10, uh, it loses that temperature very quickly. So, um, you know, that's the insulation properties are not good, particularly on these fridges. Uh, as I say, good in winter. But it's a real trial for it in summer, particularly if you've got this set to minus 15. Don't run your freezer at minus 15 if you're just going camping. Run it at minus 5. All you want to do is maintain frozen stuff, frozen for a few days or whatever. Um, don't run it at minus 15. Um, and, you know, look, I know you like ice cream, but seriously, go without. You don't want to be running your fridge at minus 16 so the ice cream's hard. That's just crazy. The fridge never cycles off. It will never switch off in, in the summer heat. So, um, you know... It's it's a bit of a compromise in winter. Yep, fine. Not in summer. Don't do it. Um, so there you go. All right, that'll do. I'll um, if I think of something else to talk about, I'll definitely do another video. I haven't done one for a while. All right. Now, I suppose there's probably lots of stuff I could talk about. Anyway, all right. Thanks for watching. See you later.